The uh, Cygnus launch vehicle is uh, out on the pad at the Wallops Flight Facility. The preparations for Sunday's launch is continuing. And the work to get Cygnus ready for the launch didn't just get going when the rocket was rolled out to the pad. Recently, I spoke with Floyd Booker, NASA's Cygnus 2 visiting vehicle lead, about what's required to get these cargo ships ready to go and how far in advance they actually start preparing for any given mission. Well, the program starts strategically. We start years out. We, we look at all the ve vehicles that plan to come to station and the various crews and, and what science is planned for them. And with that, we develop a manifest for each visiting vehicle. And so it's kind of my job to, um, to coordinate and manage the requirements as the cargo is identified and, um, and developed and delivered and then, of course, installed in the vehicle. And I expect that those requirements and those manifests change over time. They do they don't change. Get they don't, they're from, not static. Right. Strategic is years. Tactical, at about a year, we start identifying mass properties, powered instruments like refrigerators, incubators, mm -hmm. Um, different components like that to meet unique requirements for the vehicle if it needs power. The visiting vehicle lead actually means means what? What's your responsibility? Well, I'm responsible for, again, meeting that hardware's requirements, ensuring we can fly it safely on the vehicle, ensuring the vehicle has resources to receive it and, and get it to station. In some cases, if it, we're talking about science experiments, those things are known fairly far in advance. That's correct. Um, years five years well again the from a year's perspective is strategic plan uh, tactical we look at within a year mm -hmm. so for me I start really looking at the details at a year uh, at one year at one year and it's I guess then within that time period that you're looking at uh, the more mundane things like maybe clothing and, and other it, things you're right because then we have crew we know what sizes they are and and things like that and then when in six months we've identified um, their food, their clothing, all the science equipment, the um, things we need to repair and, and uh, maintenance and service within that time period that this vehicle is going to be on orbit. And so those details flesh out at that time. The long range planning is done higher up the food chain, as you Correct. say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're thinking in terms of what we know we're going to need in the long term, but the, the, the the more planning, the, the more detailed planning, I guess, is, is what comes in this 12-month this lead-up? Correct. 12 to 6 months. Is that, does that take a whole year? Or would you like more time? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it does. It, I mean, we, we have to identify the, the, the things for the vehicle. You know, what's the total mass of this? Some things are heavier or lighter than others, and, and so we develop, uh, and of course that picture changes as we evolve, as we get closer to the launch. If we slip, we may change some of the components that are flying that are needed in that time frame. So there's some flexibility in uh, being able to move cargo from one visiting vehicle to the other as we really approach the launch uh, window. How, you've talked, you mentioned a couple of times worrying about mass properties, and, and just how specific how accurate d does that need to be uh, for someone who's not in the business it would seem like you know whether it weighs a pound or a pound and a half yeah so what it would be okay right not so much here well when you're talking about um, three or four thousand pounds of cargo it adds up so yes we have to um, the vehicle is limited to a total amount of mass it can carry to orbit and of course we try to optimize and use every ounce of that and so, yes, we, um, we're, we worry about the ounces at the end. It's not, and it's not just the, the total weight then, but it's how it's distributed within the vehicle. That's correct. So there's uh, vehicle uh, weight NCG concerns. That center of gravity, right? Center of gravity mm -hmm. of the vehicle. And so as the, um, the commercial vehicle folks, when they receive our cargo, of course, we're weighing and, and measuring the CG of large bags so it matches their models when they install it in the vehicle. When a Cygnus vehicle, this one or another one that you're working on, when it launches, does that mean your job's over? No, I, um, I'm, a, I'm the lead for the Cygnus vehicles. So I'm, um, I've got a backup that's working the next flight. That's now in October, and then I'll, I'm already planning. I'm already in sight one year for Orb 4, which is uh, next spring. 
So we're already planning for that flight, the cargo that flies on that flight. Is your job where, does your job end when it l gets off the launch pad, or are you still following this one all through I the rest of the I will follow this one because part of taking cargo to the ISS, this vehicle does not return. We don't get cargo back. Uh, we actually use it as a disposal vehicle. So we're also looking at what uh, trash is available. So uh, we'll load this vehicle with trash, unused, I mean used components and daily trash from the crew and uh, burn that up when it returns. And you've got the same kind of weight and, and CG worries. The same uh, worries go into that. Yes, we track uh, every bag of trash, every, every used ORU that goes in each bag and we communicate that to the, um, to the sickness guys and they, uh, they may tell us that this particular bag needs to be in a specific location in the vehicle for return. Space on a, even on a returning vehicle like Cygnus is is pretty important. Uh, earlier this week during the mission management team meeting, I saw you get called up to uh, give a report on how much space was still available on uh, something that was coming home. That's true. Yes. Uh, people want to make sure that because uh, they want to want to get everything off the station we can. I guess. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. So in an ideal situation, we will use every bit of mass we can going uphill and we'll use every bit of volume and mass we have to, to throw away trash uh, when the vehicle leaves. So as you mentioned, you're already working on a future, on, on all the future Cygnus missions, I guess, from what you say, right? Well, we, we do have some ideas of uh, big payloads that fly throughout the life of this contract, so yes. Mm -hmm. But again, we start looking at the details inside of a year be uh, very interesting knowing knowing a little bit more about how it gets packed when you see it get off the launch pad right exactly <laughs> floyd thanks very much for uh, for a couple of minutes here to give us some insight into uh, what goes into packing one of these things uh Glad floyd booker floyd booker is the uh, orbiter orbital 2 visiting vehicle lead